SpaceX is transforming the future of space exploration, despite a setback in its first orbital Starship launch. Also, NASA is collaborating with SpaceX to turn Starship into a space station, a project that could revolutionize humanity's presence in space. All this and more in today's exciting episode of Great SpaceX. In a significant move to foster innovation and advance the future of human spaceflight and the U.S. commercial low-Earth orbit economy, NASA has announced the second Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2 initiative, or CCSC2, and has partnered with seven American companies, which are SpaceX, Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Sierra Space, Think Orbital, vast space, and special aerospace services. The CCSC2 initiative represents a strategic approach by NASA to support commercial space-related ventures without utilizing extensive government resources. By providing valuable insights and resources, NASA seeks to bolster the development of capabilities crucial to the establishment of a robust low-Earth orbit economy. Each company will pay for their own participation in the program. Phil McAllister, Director of Commercial Spaceflight at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. said, It is great to see companies invest their own capital toward innovative commercial space capabilities. And we've seen how these types of partnerships benefit both the private sector and NASA. The companies can leverage NASA's vast knowledge and experience, and the agency can be a customer for the capabilities included in the agreements in the future. Ultimately, these agreements will foster more competition for services and more providers for innovative space capabilities. As part of the initiative, all companies submitted proposals that NASA representatives evaluated. Notably, SpaceX proposed to use Starship as an in-space low-Earth orbit destination. In other words, Starship will be able to operate like a space station in orbit where astronauts can visit to perform science research in microgravity just like they currently do at the International Space Station. SpaceX is collaborating with NASA on an integrated low Earth orbit architecture to provide a growing portfolio of technology with near-term Dragon evolution and concurrent Starship development. This architecture includes Starship as a transportation and in-space low Earth orbit destination element supported by Super Heavy, Dragon, and Starlink and constituent capabilities in including crew and cargo transportation, communications, and operational and ground support, NASA shared this week. The other companies had different proposals that are still under development. For example, Blue Origin is collaborating with NASA to develop integrated commercial space transportation capability. Northrop Grumman is helping NASA develop a persistent platform to provide autonomous and robotic capabilities for commercial science research and manufacturing capabilities in low Earth orbit. That's all well and good, but let's get back to the Starship space station concept. It is what it says on the tin. Starship could potentially be used as a replacement for a space station. SpaceX has stated that the vehicle is intended to be a fully reusable transportation system that can carry both crew and to destinations throughout the solar system, including the Moon and Mars. Moreover, Starship does have the potential to be used as a space station replacement because it is designed to endure the ether of space for extended periods of time. The vehicle's proposed design includes a a pressurized cabin that can accommodate up to a hundred people, making it possible to persist for long-duration space missions. Starship is also designed with the capability to autonomously dock with other spacecraft. This capability simplifies mission operations by reducing the need for specialized equipment or crew intervention, streamlining the overall process for rendezvous and docking. Currently, the company hasn't had an exact design for the project, however, one six-way docking node with four starships attached, plus a mating adapter brought up on another flight for capsule vehicles and enough solar panels would be ideal. There's a large central structure, bigger than a docking node, with solar arrays and radiators with four large arms. Starships would dock using dorsal ports that are considerably larger than the current ones. Cargo and new instruments can be carried through these from one ship to the interior of the central node and then carried to any of the other station ships through the large diameter arms. No need to limit ourselves to docking ports designed for small capsules. Of course, a couple of small current ports can be included for Dream Chaser and so on. In fact, the station ships can do more than orbit thanks to the central node's power. Some can retain their heat shield and return to Earth every few months for refurbishment with a new suite of instruments. But obviously, you you don't need me to tell you that this will be a groundbreaking innovation in space habitation. 
A station starship can land and get new instruments from technicians. This is simpler than a few astronauts doing it, not to mention the savings on the hourly rate to send them out and carry out the refurbishment. The basic ship will be a bargain, recycled from one of the many starships that the new Star Factory churns out like pancakes. It's smarter and thriftier to launch a bunch of these ships than to turn one into a cozy home. All that will be left is to decorate it with bits and pieces from starship deliveries. But why bother filling a starship with pallets full of packaged instruments and Eccles and internal structures only to then transfer all of that into a hollowed out shell and finally put astronauts to work assembling it all in zero G? Astronaut work hours are expensive. But, of course, where there's a will, there's a way. Private companies are now designing futuristic space habitats that will fit inside a big launcher, much like Starship, anticipating the need for a new generation of space stations once the aging ISS retires, which if you hadn't heard yet, will be by the end of this decade. One such project is the orbiting laboratory called the Loop Multipurpose Orbital Module, which was recently unveiled by Airbus Industries. In addition to science laboratories and living quarters, plans for the spacious loop include a unique centrifuge that will spin to create artificial gravity for the crew to counter the negative effects of weightlessness on the body. Meanwhile, on a much larger scale, the Voyager Station, as imagined by the Space Development Corporation, is an extraordinarily ambitious plan. It includes a huge rotating space hotel made up of many modules that, when assembled, forms a giant rotating ring. It'll be able to host 440 people in luxury accommodations, which is very similar to the fictional space station depicted in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. But one thing to keep in mind is that these grandiose plans depend on Starship or another big rocket to work well and not explode. Just saying. It has managed to lift off, but not to circle the planet. That's not surprising, given that rockets tend to have a rough start. Elon Musk, the boss and chief engineer of SpaceX, tweeted that they would try again in six to eight weeks. This was after the Starship exploded in mid-air, creating a spectacular fireworks show for the spectators. Some might call it a rapid unscheduled disassembly, but we prefer to call it a spontaneous combustion celebration. Starship's journey to success is longer than a SpaceX launch livestream, but they have proved even with their Falcon 9 rocket, which flies more often than some people change their socks, that they can make reusable rockets that cost less than NASA's big and wasteful SLS. Starship has big dreams, orbiting Earth, moon hopping with tourists, and building stuff on Mars. But first, it needs to show us what it can do. Fly high, fly safe, and fly again. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX, as well as the newest developments in innovative deep space settlements. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking our Patreon link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.